Welcome everyone today for Network After Works Business Growth Summit, where you're going to learn from three speakers, great speakers at that. And our first one is Benjamin Kepner. He's going to teach you on how to grow your business with Google Ads. Uh, Benjamin is the CEO of Global Social Media Marketing. He has focused his career growth around growing businesses with Google Ads. And as one of 5,000 Google for Education certified trainers, he travels to present training workshops for schools, conferences, summits, businesses, and teachers to transform teaching and learning with the 90 million students he teaches who uses Google. Um, and without, uh, we won't keep you any longer. Benjamin, I'll let you go ahead and take it off. Awesome. Thanks for the warm introduction and welcome everyone to the Business Growth Summit with Network After Work. This is going to be my speaking engagement on how to grow your business with Google Ads as discussed. So let's jump in. So quick little intro of me uh, was mentioned that I am one of 5,000 Google for Education certified trainers. I'm the CEO of my company, Global Social Media Marketing. I also teach Google Ads and Google Analytics at the Digital Workshop Center. I've developed their course curriculum for this year. In tandem with doing that, as the CEO of my company, I've managed roughly over $6 million just in Google Ads alone for clients just this year. And then I'm set to release an online course, which is going to be fun for me, specifically around how to kickstart for beginners Google Ads, and that will be released with Madecraft in 2022. So why should we use Google Ads? Well, number one, Google is the number one search engine in the world. Roughly about 90, 95%, somewhere in that range of all search that's done online is done through Google. There are other platforms out there like Bing, Yahoo, even AOL is still around, but predominantly Google is how people search on the internet and it's even become its own verb. I'm sure you may have heard at some stage for someone to say, hey, Google it. So Google Ads reaches a network of more than 2 million websites and apps as well that they have uh, been able to leverage outside of just what people are searching. They can actually even tap into websites and apps. Online ads can increase your brand awareness. And we find that 75% of people that click on our ads was because they were actually searching for something or for information. There's roughly 167 billion monthly Google searches. So you're really never going to run out of new prospects, customers, people to interact with your business. 2018 said that about 27% people are more likely to buy something in store if they clicked on an advertisement that they found from Google search. And then they also found that, you know, people spend more because they actually had a prior research experience with the brand potentially before going and buying something. Finally, a lot of the searches that we see are actually longer. And these are what are called long tail keyword variations where we have more than just one word. So for example, very common if you're searching for a restaurant. Recording in progress. <clears throat> then you would be looking at something like, you know, pizza shop near me or pizza restaurant near me. That would be an example of a very long tail. And we find that half of the searches are doing that because people are looking for specific solutions or they're further down the buyer journey cycle. So what are some of the sales pain points that you might be experiencing if you are a business owner, if you work in your current business in any function that's related to sales? You might have poor or unfunded leads. You might lack a predictable sales model. You might be struggling with running Facebook ads due to all the iOS changes and updates to their, their system this year. Or you may just lack brand awareness for your company. Maybe you're just getting started or... You know, during these times, it's been a lot harder to go to in-person events and conferences. And so Google is a great place to kind of show your brand online where people are searching every day. So those solutions, right? Leads can be qualified better on Google ads. You can use funnels, you can use quizzes. You can also create funnels that have systems that collect measurable results and allow you to adjust accordingly based on performance. One of the big things with Google ads is Pretty much most of everything is trackable unless we're going through multiple systems it gets a little bit harder but for the most part i'm going to know exactly how many people saw my ad how many people clicked on my ad what keywords are converting where are those users based are they male or female right there's a lot of targeting and data rich information there that we may not have found that you would see in other traditional advertising platforms you can target a specific audience as i alluded to Oh, and if you haven't heard this yet, it's the number one search engine with over 5 billion searches per day. 
YouTube is also owned by Google, and it is the number one video platform in the world with over 30 million visitors per day. Funny enough, I was looking back in my Facebook memories. I literally gave a presentation for Network After Work on YouTube just about a year ago. So it's funny that I'm doing, um, let's say, a variation of that presentation for Google now. So looking at account setup, these are the things that you would be doing as you create a Google Ads account. I've got a, a YouTube video here in the presentation. I won't play all of this video. It's about an eight, nine minute video, but it actually walks you through exactly how to create a Google Ads account. If you, if you never have one or you don't know how to do that, these are the steps. You're going to sign into a Google, out, a Google uh, account. You're going to go select new Google Ads account from the you know, create Google ads account page. You'll fill in your billing information. You'll select how you want to receive notifications. You give access. You provide access pretty much through email to people in your company or other people outside. If you're working with a marketing company and then you want to integrate those things, right? You want to integrate it with all the different platforms. So you want to integrate it with Google analytics, your YouTube channel, if you've got one, and then your Google, my business that way, if you run any ad campaigns, you can attribute to those platforms and you can integrate all the analytics into one place. So determining your advertising goal, right? When you're, when you're first thinking about how am I going to use Google ads to grow my business, you need to think about what are your marketing goals? Because just as you may, if you've had any other experience in social advertising or any other online advertising platform, those campaigns are created based on what your goals are, right? So there's a number of different goals. So here's some of the main ones that I see in Google, sales, leads, website traffic, brand awareness and reach, local store visits and promotions, app promotion, product and brand consideration. Now, you might be looking at the ones that stand out for most businesses are gonna be sales and leads, Right, because those are usually the bottom line ROI, you know, um, let's say financially driven types of campaigns for a business to grow. But some of these other things do play a part, right? So, like if you're a local business and you're trying to get foot traffic, or if you're a startup and nobody knows about your company, you might want some brand awareness or even website traffic. You know, I find working, for example, in very competitive industries. Uh, arguably one of the most competitive industries in Google ads is actually the legal space. And I spent a lot of time in my career working with lawyers. And um, sometimes I find that running campaigns that are focused around driving traffic to law firms is a better approach sometimes than, than doing leads and sales because it's just so competitive. And it's the idea of, you know, maybe you saw that law firm's billboard driving down the highway every week. And eventually something happened and you needed to call them and you remember them because of the billboard. It's kind of the same idea there too with brand awareness and website traffic. If I keep sending people to my website and they keep seeing me when the moment's right, they might actually convert and it will be cheaper that way too. Obviously, when you look at these advertising goals, they're also effective on how much they cost. So keep in mind that if you're running Google ads campaigns for sales and leads, those are generally going to be higher, right? Because those are valued higher by your business and by Google. And therefore you should keep that in mind. So there's some different approaches of running these in tandem with each other separately, testing them out. But long story short, I spent a lot of my time with businesses really focusing on these first three, I would say sales leads and website traffic. And then, you know, there are options for other potentials if you want to explore as you get more advanced. So here's kind of explaining some of the different types of campaign types, right? So the first thing that you're going to go through when you're creating a Google ads campaign is you're going to select your goal, as I showed, and then you're going to select your type of campaign. So these are the different types of campaigns. You may have seen some of these on Google, right? So there's search people that are actively interested in searching for your product or service with text ads. Display is going to be those ads that you may have seen at some stage if you were perusing the internet and you were on a major website and you saw an ad maybe on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the website. That's what's called a display ad. Shopping ads actually was a feature that was released to um, any type of business as of last year for free. So that was a big thing that Google uh, made a big push for and we're seeing a lot of retail brands now go to shopping as their kind of main campaign type that they're running. So if you if you own any type of product-based business, 
definitely shopping is a good place for you for e-commerce. We also know that e-commerce exploded last year um, with online purchase behavior. So shopping is a good way to promote your products directly within Google. They can literally see the uh, products there as they search and then kind of buy them directly through what's called the Google Merchant Center. It's actually essentially just creating your own store. Actually, if you can believe this in 2021, you don't even have to have a website if you don't want to. You could literally sell your product services through uh, Google or you could sell them through social media platforms. Most of these online platforms, because of last year's events, have now innovated social commerce or e-commerce options to, to buy directly from the platforms themselves. Video, um, as we mentioned, is uh, coming directly from YouTube, right? So YouTube is that video platform. Google owns YouTube. You can run those video campaigns anywhere across YouTube. There's a number of variations we'll kind of go over here as we get further into the presentation. But you just need to keep in mind that uh, Google Ads is the platform in which you would run any of these campaigns. And that would also include running your ads on YouTube. Smart would be reaching business goals with automated ads. It's letting Google ads kind of do the heavy lifting for you and delivering smarter campaigns that are more automated without you getting into the details and setting everything up yourself. And then discovery is more of, let's say, maybe somebody was searching for something or they weren't necessarily looking for your brand, but there you are somehow through an advertisement that they're discovering. So Again, at the top of YouTube, you can also see this in Gmail, right? So you can run your Google ads into people's Gmails. And I think the last time I checked, there's like uh, more than 100 million people that use Gmail. So definitely a relevant audience there. And very powerful if you think about it, right? You I mean, a lot of people um, spend a lot of time spending so much time on email. Why not kind of, you know, put the gasoline on the fire for your email marketing campaigns and layer in maybe some discovery ad campaigns to the same email inboxes if possible. So things you want to consider before you start creating your ads, right? So you, you've got your, your goal, as we've mentioned, in the campaign type, but then from there it's, you know, what is your budget, right? So I'll give you some rough numbers on my experience of working on Google ads in the last, you know, um, five to 10 years of my career, somewhere around that range is, is pretty much that, you know, the average small business in the United States is going to spend anywhere from about a thousand to $3,000 on average, depending on the industry vertical. If you're maybe a medium sized business to enterprise, right? That number jumps up to 5,000 to million dollars per month. I'm actually working with a client right now that is spending a million dollars a month on Google ads. So, you know, your budget is ultimately going to be determined by what, what availability of budget do you have to use, but then also like, you know, if you are able to produce sales and leads that justify an ROI, then maybe that's going to increase. And so there's numbers and metrics, things like what is your cost per click or what is your cost per conversion or what is your return on ad spend, right? These are some of these metrics that we'll go over here shortly. But they kind of affect what your ultimate advertising budget might be. Also, who's your target audience, right? Are you trying to reach the United States? Are you trying to reach Spain? Are you trying to reach males? Are you trying to reach females? Are you trying to reach millennials? Are you trying to reach baby boomers? Really, all of these different types of targeting options are readily available as they are available on most other online advertising platforms. And then that leads you into where does your product or service sell best? Sometimes I find that your real life customer is going to match your online or Google ads customers potentially, but you're not always going to see that match. And so sometimes I see businesses that are trying to get new customers and they're building that out on Google, right? It's important to keep in mind that the way people search psychologically is much different. There are variations of like, even in the U S right? People that uh, search for something in the South might be something very different than how people search in the North. There might be different ways to say things, right? So again, using that South and North analogy, I know for me coming from the South, it's Coke, right? When I'm talking about a, you know, a cola beverage, but up in the North, it might be pop. So that might be a different keyword variation that people in the South search for Coke and people in the North search for pop. And so maybe they sell better in a certain market you know, 
for example, the South generally is full of a lot of Coca-Cola people, maybe because Coke and Coke are very related, right? What kinds of resources do you have to make an ad? So do you have a copywriter? Are you going to be able to make videos? Do you have images on file? Do you have a graphic designer that's going to do that? Anybody can write Google ads. It's not like a rocket science, I would say, to write them, but obviously having strong text that actually hooks people in and shows the functions and benefits of your company will help. And then with video, there's definitely a whole field around that, right? Film, television, that was a whole major you could go to for college and there's film schools around that. So, you know, you can make it easy, you can make it advanced, but it's understanding what resources do you have available to make your ads. And then finally, how is your product or service typically advertised? Are you currently doing television? Are you currently doing billboards? Are you currently doing newspaper? Are you focusing on social media platforms? Are you doing email marketing, right? And so you can maybe garner some insights from those other platforms and leverage some of those. But the real big benefit, again, of using Google Ads is that most everything is trackable. So I'm going to know who saw my ad, when they saw my ad, where they saw my ad, if they clicked on the ad, what they searched to find the ad, and if maybe they converted and became a customer. That's all readily available, and I know how much it costs to move those people through that buyer journey cycle. So when you're setting up your Google Ads goals, you're going to have to set a bid strategy. So this is kind of getting more uh, detailed into the different types of bid strategies that you can run for a given budget that you're setting for a campaign. There's multiple bid strategies, and they're really ta tailored depending upon what your campaign goals were that we showed there at the beginning of the presentation. So clicks is if generally you want to generate traffic to your website. Impressions is focusing more on brand awareness, right? People are seeing your ads. Conversions, if you want customers to take a direct action, right? They uh, sign up to your email newsletter. They order their, you know, business growth summit uh, virtual pass with all the recordings of the sessions and they pay for that, right? That might be a conversion. So, you know, you want to set your bidding strategy based on what your marketing goals are. And then from there, you're going to consider using smart bidding, which is just their way of saying, let's set a target for how to best optimize these campaigns. And so I mentioned some of these very briefly earlier in the presentation, but to go into a little bit more detail, target CPA stands for target cost per action, or some people also call that cost per acquisition. And ultimately that's defining to Google, hey, after I've run some Google ads campaigns for some time, I should have a benchmark to understand what does it cost for me to get a customer or what does it cost for me to get a lead? And then I can literally go and tell Google based on my results of advertising campaigns in time, hey, Google, I don't want to pay more than $50, $15 for a webinar register uh, sign up. Please do not spend more money for that conversion unless you can get them in for that, that cost, right? And so that's usually an advanced strategy that a lot of people will go to once they have some campaigns and they know what their cost per conversion costs are going to look like. Return on ad spend, I briefly mentioned that as well, is really the big metric I would say most advertisers or, or clients that I'm working with today are you know, looking at as the main results of their performance of their campaigns. It's pretty much saying, how much am I going to generate in revenue divided by you know, what that ad spend is? So for example, if I made $1,000 from spending 500, my ROAS is a two times ROAS, right? And that's a very common metric that you would see for most businesses, especially for any e-commerce or product brands. And that's why a lot of those e-commerce or product brands will move into that target ROAS of, after a certain stage, right? When you think about products, profit margins, those types of things, that, that makes perfect sense why we would go down that target ROAS. If you're a service-based business, maybe it's not gonna make as much sense, right? Like if I'm an accountant, for example, I might do taxes for one person and those taxes might be much more expensive because the other business that I'm working with, for example, is has more overhead or more expenses or whatever. So it's really hard for me to tell Google at that stage, right, as an accountant, like this is my target ROAS. You might be looking more at a better target CPA there where your CPA in that stage is maybe a lead that fills out a form on your accounting website and then becomes a customer. And then that way, 
you know, you're kind of setting it from that approach instead of from a ROAS. ROAS, again, would be very good option if you have like an e-commerce brand that you're able to track like online order sales. Maximize conversions is kind of what I was just kind of walking through with that accountant example, right? So if you want to get as many conversions as possible, it doesn't have to be leads. Again, it could be conversion of a, a you know, a sign up or getting some initial information, whatever that conversion looks like for you, pretty much maximize conversion bidding strategy is just saying, hey, Google, please use my budget that is available and give me as many conversions as possible with that budget. Finally, the last bid strategy that some people overlook is what's called enhanced cost per click. As I mentioned, I use this a lot um, with law firms specifically because they're in such a competitive market on Google, one of the top industries on Google ads. So sometimes I find, right, if I'm doing a maximized conversions, it's very expensive. I've seen law leads and some verticals come in at 500 to $1,000 leads. So in some scenarios, it might make sense to just drive more clicks that are still wanting to potentially convert and become, for example, uh, law case clients, but that I'm still focusing on the click. So it's kind of like there's, you know, maximize clicks, maximize conversions. And then in between that, there's enhanced cost per click, which is saying I want to adjust. Uh, I want to have control of what I pay for my cost per click, but I want to actually get people to click through that also might actually convert. So those are some of the main bid strategy goals. And now we're gonna kind of segue into some, some different ads. So I'm gonna show a number of different Google ads. Um, keep in mind again, a YouTube ad is from Google. So I'm gonna show some video ads here and um, walk through some examples with some existing clients and some things that we've been doing over the last year. So Google video ads are campaigns that run as ads on YouTube. As I mentioned, if you reach out to network after work and you wanna see the YouTube presentation I did last year, that should be maybe available. Uh, video ad can be in-stream skippable, in-stream non-skippable. It could be a discovery or it could be a bumper. So these are just the different types of formats. And so I figured I'd show you a example video of an in-stream ad that we created. We've been working a lot at my company with solar companies this year um, to get homeowners to obviously go green and save money on their power bill. So we created a solar ad here that actually walks through me talking with solar sales professionals. And this is an ad that is converting leads for us right now um, as we're running this campaign. So I thought I'd show an example a video ad that we're running and it's targeting all of these Google search keyword patterns that people are searching for for solar leads. When I need somebody that can deliver a quality lead, you know, somebody that actually shows up for a product that has an interest in solar. So our company does solar and roofing and remodeling. And so we want to pick up like around eight to 10 more solar jobs per month. Okay. We tried a bunch of different lead providers, but they've all been crap. And I spent a lot of money. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things that came in, we're getting leads, but they're just all not answering their phone or they're saying they're not interested as soon as you get in touch with them or I didn't fill out no form. Yeah, I'm trying to find somebody to piggyback with that delivers real results. Yeah, no, I mean, I would say definitely in your industry, I think leads are just kind of thrown around. Like that, to your point, like the quality is not such a focus. It's more of just like getting leads and then distributing them. And then the other thing that I've realized working in solar is like a lot of people are sharing the same leads too. Let me tell you how I'm different maybe and start there. And then you can kind of maybe think about, does it make sense for us to work together? So number one, we run YouTube ads. We don't do Facebook ads. We have done Facebook ads in the past. However, to your point, we find that the quality of the leads is much worse on Facebook than it is on YouTube. Number two, on YouTube, I want to build trust with our clients. So day one, when you start with us, you're going to get a dedicated account manager that's going to meet with you weekly to check on results and making sure that we're doing everything we need to do to get the quality leads that you're looking for. Also with your account, you're going to have full access to that account. So for whatever reason, if you want to see the data or the keywords or the types of leads or any of that stuff that we're doing on the back end in the Google ads account, you have full transparency and full access to that. And that's kind of our philosophy, right? Is like, we want to help people. We're not in the business of just billing people and taking their money and just giving them leads that are crap. We actually want to help them. So 
That's also advantageous of like, it's your account at that stage. Third thing that separates us from other people in the industry is we do focus on keyword research. So to your point of intent and people actually searching to go to solar, that's our strategy. We start with a keyword research first. We analyze your market. So if you're in SoCo, I would do an analysis of all the solar related keywords in your market. I would know how many people are searching in SoCo, what the cost per click is. And then in the first month or two, I'm establishing your cost per lead. We're seeing leads right now, anywhere from about 20 to a hundred dollars a lead. Just depends on the keyword, depends on the counties or cities that we're targeting. Also the value offer. I know that some solar companies have different things where they do solar batteries or they do the tandem roof installation. You know, there's all these different things that companies do. So that is also going to impact it. And then your video, we develop customized videos, meaning you're literally either going to send us footage that you already have of yourself or something in your solar company. And we're going to take that. We're going to professionally edit it for YouTube and customize it that way. Or we've also done video shoots. I was actually just in California with another solar company about two weeks ago. I flew out to San Diego. We did an in-person video shoot, took that footage, came back to where I'm based in Colorado. We edited it and those videos will be released here in the next week or two. Generally, it takes us about one to two weeks to get your ads up. First week is really onboarding, get your account set up, making sure we have access to like Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Tag Manager, understanding where you are with your video, if we're going to need to create that from scratch or we have something to work with. And then really by the end of week two, you're launched and live. First month, like I said, first month or two is establishing your cost per lead. I like what you guys are about. I like that it'll be my own custom video that you guys are trying to help create. I actually kind of believe that you guys wouldn't share the leads. <laughs> right, we don't. And if you needed us to sign like an NDA on that, I'm happy to do that. You guys actually do do the whole teaching side of it too. And I really like that because that is something I would like to learn. Okay. Just so I can do stuff on my own at some point, you know? When you work with us, you would get a YouTube ad and then mm -hmm. we would build like a landing page where we would send people to um, from that ad. They would then take a qualifying quiz this quiz is generally five to 10 questions that they would answer basic things that you're probably already asking in door to door, right? Like what zip code are you in? What's your current energy bill? Have you ever considered solar, right? Like some pretty like qualifying questions on your end. And then mm -hmm. that way, what that does is, is it prevents you from like leads that are not qualified homeowners. So we only generate like homeowner, like qualified homeowner leads. So we'd never send you a lead that's not a homeowner to sum up is essentially a YouTube ad that goes to a landing page. They take a quiz. You get that lead. That lead would be sent to you via wherever you want it to be sent. So your phone or your email, or if you have a CRM with your company. And then from there, we also do offer like booked calls, right? So we can automate like those just doing exactly what you did with me for today's call, like having an automated, uh, booked call system so that you can get them like on your calendar without even having to follow up. So that whole package is what we offer for the solar industry. Why were you maybe concerned of not working with us? And then what made you want to work with us? I guess. Okay. So I wasn't concerned about not working with you guys. I was just wanting to get different, different offers, I guess, or different okay. um, points and kind of compare. I would say one of the main things is definitely talking to you face to face. That would definitely be one of the main things. Just talking to um mm -hmm. to the CEO of the company. That that definitely changes changes the stride of things for sure. Shoot, honestly, just just being able just listening to my concerns and just being able to talk it through with me, you know. Right. So that's an example of an in-stream ad that would be an ad you would see on YouTube. I think it's also just a really good video for the audience that's attending this session to see like the full picture, right? Like what happens in a, a, a Google or YouTube ad, you know, what happens after that, right? And I kind of showed that funnel visualization of they're going to go from the ad, they're going to click on the ad, they're going to go to a landing page. That landing page is either going to have a form or a quiz generally, and then they're going to convert through. Another type of ad that you might consider running is a display ad. Display ads are really good for getting lots of clicks in the door. They're kind of more, I would say, disrupt disruptive advertising from the fact like you're not necessarily looking 
for these things and then you're seeing this ad. So there's an example here um, of Scorpion, which is another marketing company and they offer all of these PPC uh, campaigns. And you can see, you know, for if I was on Ask Jeeves, if I was searching, um, that's what it looks like, right? So that's a display ad. And so those can appear based on like websites or other partner networks. And they're usually like a little image, right? Maybe some very kind of simple text. You can see their call to action, like get more. And, you know, I think that display ads are good to get a lot of traffic in the door. I haven't found it personally as great success with conversion. So when you're thinking about display ads, if you are going to be creating some of those, maybe go down the approach of doing some remarketing or driving some website traffic. If you're not familiar with the concept of remarketing, it's the idea that if I see an ad and I don't convert the first time, I'm going to see a second ad and it's going to have either a different messaging or a different value offer or something like that, and hopefully drive me through that second time. Quick analogy I would give you is this kind of dates back to the 90s when television advertising used to be a big thing. There was a study done by Nielsen Ratings, who you may have heard of as like pretty much like the founder of like how television ratings and all the metrics for, you know, being to work with advertisers, they'd be able to pitch that or sell that. So, you know, there was a, there was a saying that said that when you used to watch a TV ad in the nineties, you'd have to watch that same television ad eight times sometimes before you'd actually become a customer. So the same type of concept I think is applicable to YouTube and Google ads, right? Um, I'm not going to always convert the first time I see your ad, but maybe if I keep seeing that ad, or if I see another version of that ad with a different message and value offer, I will convert through. So just keep that in mind. And that's also why display ads are powerful because they rely on data from people that are signed in and their things that they're doing. So when I mean signed in, I mean that they're signed into their Gmail account. Essentially Google pulls data either from people that are signed into their Gmail account or people that are not signed into their Gmail account. And I won't get into the nitty gritty of all that tech stuff. It's definitely something you can look into further if you're interested in learning more about it, but just kind of putting out there the different maybe use cases of a video versus a display, right? Video might be great for top of funnel, brand awareness, early lead generation, maybe display is going to be better, maybe further down the buyer journey cycle. They already know about my brand. They're evaluating. I'm kind of remarketing to them. Maybe. So video ad results, this is a example, like foolproof. I, again, I wanted to show as many examples in this presentation. Like, you know, here's a client that we worked with an e-commerce marketing agency that was selling a course. We were running a, a video campaign. You can see, uh, for, really not that long, right? From Mar just from March to August, we were able to generate them over $2,500 lead or 2,500 leads, right? And this was actually webinar sign up. So anyone that's running webinars, huge trend that came out of uh, last year. And I know a lot of people focus on doing email blasts, um, which is fine, definitely a great strategy, but we found that running YouTube webinar sales funnels are gangbusters. Like we are, um, this client alone, we produced a quarter of a million dollars through webinar sales funnels just last year. So these are kind of just showing a brief period and we're getting a webinar sign up at $7 a sign up, which is pretty good, right? So this is an example of some of the results we got. Another example with a course creator, a person that's selling a course, they spent roughly about, you know, $50,000, um, to get another, you know, 3,620 webinar signups. Now they had a little bit higher, maybe because their course is a little bit more complex. But also look at the impressions there, right? Like where are you going to get 5 million people to see your ads, um, in 2021 for that type of cost? Not, not very common, right? Something like that on television, again, alluding back to that, right? Like television advertising, you might spend $10,000 a month. Um, and this is over the course of, you know, roughly a year. So, I mean, go figure out, you know, you can make that evaluation from a marketing ROI perspective. Um, another brand that we worked with that we did some video stuff with, we're now working with uh, luxury clothing companies. You can see, look at their cost per conversion, right? Um, $144. They sell luxury clothes that can be three, $400. So 
you know, while that might seem like a high cost per conversion to sell a clothing product, if the clothing product itself is three or $400, we just made it two or three times row ads. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Again, very simple luxury clothing shop. Now there's nothing complicated about this good video ad creative 38 seconds. And you can see that, you know, that they're, that they're kind of trending upwards with how they're getting more conversions and, you know, they're starting to spend more because they're getting ROI from it. And that's usually what happens with Google and YouTube ads, right? Once you start getting conversions and data, you can start scaling things. So it showed some display and video. Next thing that probably most people that are attending in the audience have seen on Google is Google search ads, right? So Google search ads appear at the top of what's called SERP or search engine results page. I have an example with a law firm that we worked with in the past, Manuel Solis Law Firm. And you can see that this was uh, a text ad, right? So they've got right here at the top in blue, that's the headline. The green is gonna be the display URL or the actual destination that people will go to. And then you've got your description, right? Where you can kind of see the different types of services that they offer. Down here at the bottom, you're gonna see, these are what are called site link extensions. They're additional extensions of your ad that drive people to specific pages on your website. So you can kind of see all of those things broken down here in this image. I got an example for anyone that's in the travel, hospitality, hotel space, maybe in the audience, right? So you can kind of see that broken down, like headline, description. Callouts is like calling out anything that might be unique to your business, right? Like differentiators, like here's some callouts, like um, you know, free parking, pet friendly, meetings and events, um, free Wi-Fi. Structured snippets is just a more um, robust kind of feature, I would say, of this. This is like callouts. Think of it as like, what do you want to call out that differentiates you versus like structured snippets or maybe maybe those like more predefined uh, features that are relevant for most businesses. And then those are those site links there at the bottom, right? So this is kind of that anatomy of breaking down what does a Google search ad look like? They did have, these are, these are referred to as expanded text ads. They are making initiative by July of next year to, to go away with the expanded search text ads and they're gonna be moving into more dynamic search ads, um, which essentially for, for you know, beginner understanding is just that they, Google is going to be now swapping out different headlines to be to have the ads more dynamic that show the best headline, best description, whatever that text might look like for the user based on what they're searching for and based on their patterns. So that'll be a new thing that they'll be kind of phasing um, as time goes on. Another example here um, for any insurance agents, I know working with a network after work in the past, I've seen a lot of um, people in insurance, a lot of people in law. Um, so I definitely wanted to try to touch on as many industries as I could. So these are some examples for some insurance ads that we ran here earlier, um, really at the beginning of this year. And it was an interesting client for us. It was actually international insurance. So when you're like studying abroad, right, you can actually get international student health insurance plans. You can kind of see the, uh, the headlines that we had, right? Like uh, receive uh, OPT coverage. That's what that's referred to. Two years international coverage. Very strong, like start of the call to action, right? Like apply for insurance plan to ensure coverage with our solutions. Like it's 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 very direct there, right? It's call to actions apply. Where are you applying? Because you're going to get coverage for your study abroad program, right? You can see variations that we've done. Another thing to note when you're when you're creating Google Ads you generally want to have multiple versions of your ad, as you can see here, right? You don't want to just have the same ad. Again, it goes back to that perspective of the way I might interpret it, um, you know, as the CEO of Global Social Media Market, it might be different than how my mom interprets it, for example, right? So different people re relate or resonate to different ads. Also, people search differently, right? We talked about like the difference between the South and the North. Think about if you're dealing... In this case, I was dealing with multiple countries, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of nuances, different languages. Maybe they don't understand what some of these things are. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind. And, and the way that you'll know which ads are performing better is by seeing who clicks through, who converts, what's the click-through rate, which click-through rate, if you don't know what that means, is when somebody sees the ad and then clicks, that is that click-through rate. So when they see it to click. So these are some examples in the insurance industry that we ran. Obviously, I've talked about law. We've done a lot of law. Um, I think I've lost track of the law firms that I've worked with at this stage. But you can see some of their examples too. A lot of the, the 
law firms that I worked with, it's a, it's a lot around of um, no fee guarantee. You know, you don't pay until you win. Uh, free legal consultation. It's confidential. We have credentials. Um, we're going to win your case, right? It's a lot of that type of language in their ads going to very specific landing page. And then if I can segment it, so you can kind of see these are some examples of like medical malpractice, right? Like um, if you do personal injury uh, law, for example, then it would be good, a good idea to not just start probably with personal injury, but try to segment and go down. And so you can kind of see cost per conversion in the in the law spaces I was alluding to is, is much higher, but also like, you know, very good conversion rates here, right? Like anything that's like 10% of the people that see the ad convert through. And then, you know, you can see kind of those higher cost per clicks, but, you know, personal injury law case, for example, could be anywhere the lawyer might make, you know, 50, $100,000, maybe who knows, even more depends on the size of the case. So, you know, paying $220 for a lead that could be, you know, $50,000 sounds like a pretty good return on investment to me. Retargeting, uh, I briefly was mentioning that, right? So it's like reintroducing your product or service. It's an effective tactic for those with an established following and people that have maybe have like, you know, had past exposure. So I figured I'd show another quick little retargeting ad. This is one that we've run where people have been run, have been watching our solar videos this year. And so we started retargeting with them, like letting them know, hey, you watch this video, we know um here's this message so i'll show a little bit of this video because i definitely want to make sure we try to get through all the slides but i figure i'll play this video a little bit hey wake up solar pros do you want to soak up the sun so you can rock on with your solar leads to get sales for your company if not <laughs> skip this video have you been searching keywords on youtube or google for solutions to your problem of generating more qualified solar leads like how to generate solar leads, how to sell solar online, how to sell solar at home, or Facebook solar ads. Book a solar YouTube ad strategy call to learn about our proven automated YouTube ad solar lead system to implement for your solar sales and get our free solar YouTube ads case study that shows you exactly how we generate consistently 30 qualified homeowner solar leads per month on YouTube when you book the call. Did you know that solar installation in the United States reached a record high last year? In the fourth quarter alone, the U.S. added enough energy to power over 1.5 million homes with solar. Many solar sales pros are still relying on door-to-door -door knocking, cold calling, ring, ring, leads list, and struggling ah, with the constant disapprovals and lack of quality from Facebook ads. But here's the problem. There are so many people rushing into the solar industry to try to make a profit, the potential buyers will be overwhelmed. How will they know that your company will give them the best price solar system that works for their given house and provide excellent customer service? As the CEO and founder of Global Social Media Marketing, I have over 10 years of experience in 40 industries in social media marketing and lead generation. Over the past three years, I've been growing my company to greater and greater heights with an amazing team. Global has over 40 digital marketing certifications and was awarded a top 50 technology company by Intercon for our innovations in social media marketing. We've served clients across the globe and have the results and case studies to prove it in the solar industry. At Global, we have experienced YouTube professional video creators for a range of companies in English and Spanish and now we are targeting potential and growing solar companies just like yours. You may have seen us on our number one ranked video, how to generate solar leads on YouTube. That hey, wake right. up. So right there when I showed, uh, you may have watched us, right? That's the retargeting, right? I've, I know there's all these people that have seen our other videos, they've been to our website. So now they're getting hit with this ad and I'm kind of alluding to that. Hey, you may have watched this video if you're seeing this video. Right. And so I'm kind of like playing off of that. So that's an example of a retargeting ad that we've been running and we're getting about a three to four times return on investment on that ad. Um, so that kind of shows the results right here. Right. Um, we spent roughly nine hundred dollars. Um, we're getting like a little over one hundred dollar leads. And, you know, I think that ROAS number is even higher now because we've we've kept these clients from those leads. So that was that exact ad. So that's 
a retargeting ad that we've been running. We've only been running this ad, um, as you can see, since May. So it hasn't been running that long. So when you're going through and you're creating Google ads, right, one of the big things you may have seen me mention in some of these videos in the presentation today is doing keyword research. There is actually a tool called the Google Keyword Planner that allows you within a Google Ads platform to identify how much a keyword is being searched per month on average, how much is there competition around that with other advertisers, and what is your estimated cost for somebody to click on that keyword on the low end to high end. And that's what you're seeing right here. This is actually data that was pulled directly from Google Keyword Planner. It's a free tool that you can use, very powerful, right? For you to actually know like, hey, in the United States for photo studios, I know there's 22,000 people a month searching for that. And anywhere on the low end, it's gonna cost me $1.50 for a click. And maybe on the high end, it's gonna cost me $6.28. So you can kind of start to create your campaigns around these keywords and look at which ones are going to be valuable or relevant, but also which ones are going to be competitive and are actually going to be affordable for you to, you know, be competitive in a, in a billion dollar uh, search, you know, industry. So the other thing when you talk about keywords is they have these variations of them. And they actually got away with a broad match identifier. So anyone that may have done Google ads in the past, then you might have heard of that. But these are the three different variations. And you can kind of see this screenshot here, right, of like different variations of like in you know, that medical malpractice example, right? So broad match is when it's just the word itself, right? It's not um, using any quotations or brackets. As you can kind of see here, these are all phrase match because they all have quotation marks. If there was no quotations, that would just be broad. They're usually less targeted. They reach a larger audience. Phrase is, is being more targeted. It's being specific. It's saying, I only want search results like related to this. And then exact match would, would have brackets around them. And that would be like, I only want to show my ad to people that are exactly searching for this keyword in the exact way it was typed, right? So these are some of the different variations. And you'll see a lot of people generally start with broad, which is not my recommendation when you first get started. Probably start with phrase match, so you're focusing on similar keywords. And then as time goes on, if you need to open up your sample size or get more search volume, yeah, move to broad. Exact, I really only see people doing that for like very, very specific products, which makes sense from a ROAS perspective. But again, it's gonna only reach a specific audience that types it in exactly as you have it. So you're gonna limit how many people are actually gonna be able to see that ad and also click through and convert. Here's all the different targeting options. Um, lots of different targeting options on Google Ads, right? So age, gender, location, device, time of day, household and income, parental status, similar audiences, channel placements, keywords, topics, video placements, in-market audiences, website remarketing, video remarketing. Um, the list is long. And I think it should not overwhelm you, but actually make you feel like, wow, why am I not doing Google ads today? Or how do I get started? Because your customers are all on Google. People go to Google to search to solve their problems. So if you can think about what your business offers as a solution, or what does your business offer as a value to help people in their search, then from there, you can start to build even more outside of just the keyword side of it, right? These demographic, psychographic type of information. And you see these different types of shoppers, right? Window shoppers, in-store shoppers, checkout shoppers, right? People go to Google to research a lot. So not always is somebody going to convert through again. So maybe that's why, maybe if your Google ad strategy was to have a Google search ad, and then you had a display retargeting ad and then maybe your last one was a video ad if they went to youtube right maybe i have three different ads that are kind of all you know reaching that person based on where they are in the buyer journey cycle so i kind of break these down um this is kind of an image that i've used in the past for network after work of like cold warm hot super hot right so cold is like people that don't know your business warm is like they previously engaged with your business maybe they went to your Facebook page or they went to your website or they've called you. Hot is like, you know, they definitely visited your website or they became a lead, right? Like they gave you their information. You had a conversation with them. Super hot is like existing customer, 
right? Like probably, for example, if you had a membership with the network after work and you were signing up for specific conferences or you wanted to renew um, your membership with network, network after work, right? That would be an exa a really good example of like you're an existing member and then, you know, you're trying to renew your membership or you're trying to go to an exclusive event. So these are kind of these different audience targeting options. And how I like to think about audiences as like cold, warm, hot, and super hot. You can also run placement campaigns um, on, on YouTube through Google ads, which is pretty cool, right? So like, you know, going back to that TV analogy, like back in the 90s, you used to like put your TV ad on a specific, you know, sports channel or like primetime news. Same thing on YouTube. If the advertiser has said, yeah, I'll let people advertise on my channel, then you can run it on just about any YouTube channel. Super powerful. There's a lot of YouTubers out there now and there's a lot of videos. So just another targeting strategy where you can literally place your ad on these things on a YouTube channel, on a YouTube video, on a website, on an app, on an app category, right? These are different placements that you can do. Other things you can do, you can create custom affinity audiences, things that people have affinity for. So like, do they use the meditation app? Do they watch Tony Robbins? Do they, are they interested in meditation, right? Like if I was a personal development, and this is an example of a coach, course creator, uh, consultant that we worked with. He was a, uh, a life coach slash a leadership development coach. So this is kind of his target. He built a custom audience, which is, is powerful too, because now I am still competing with advertisers, but now I'm trying to customize like, what does my potential customers interest? What are the websites that they go to? What are the apps that they use, right? That's super powerful. Can't do that on other platforms, for example, like Facebook. I can't target by people visiting a specific website, for example. So here's kind of an example walkthrough of like a sales funnel. Um, if a sales funnel is kind of a new idea to you, then I, you know, this is just one example. There's, there's multiple ways to go about creating a sales funnel, but you know, to break it down pretty simple, it's like a Google ad, right. That you see here, a landing page, which you see here, a form that would be filled out to collect that information. If this is like a lead generation sales funnel. And then if I wanted to maybe automate a books calendar with a confirmation page, right? So this is kind of the conversion steps that you would be tracking through. Okay. And this just kind of gives like a, a bigger view of like, what does a simple landing page look like? Like it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, an essay. It doesn't need to be like, I mean, honestly, it can look like it was like when the, the dot com era like started booming again, like keep it like nineties esque almost where it's very simple, like big shiny button is always really good for landing pages. Like when people see your Google ads and then they go to that page. Also try to like, if I'm targeting solar leads or solar sales as my keyword, like have that in there, right? Like solar leads, solar lead generation, solar sales, like it's very easy. And then let them know like what the value is, right? Like if you're getting information, Hey, the value is we're going to give you a free case study or Hey, we're going to have an exploratory call with you to show you how we can help you. Right? So these are some examples of building a, a simple landing page form. Uh, keep it simple. This is our form. This form converts very well. It's not difficult. It's first name, last name, email, phone number, company, website. You know, generally I find testing with forms, if you're going to do, you know, a lead qualifying process, you want to have about, um, you know, five to 10 fields max. Um, and I find that, you know, generally if you go over eight conversion rates really start to, to go down. So I think, you know, four or five is enough. A lot of people even still even just run email where they just literally just collect people's email and that's it. I want to have a little bit more data for our CRM. And I also like having the, the phone number and email so that if I do want to follow up with, I have both options. Also having a website kind of, uh, let's say that blocks a lot of the spam people or people maybe that are not credible businesses. Here's an example of that confirmation page, right? So, you know, when they fill out that form, thank you, I can automate my booked calendar. And then this populate in our CRM system. So you can kind of see how those come in. So we're coming up on the hour, covered a lot of things. As you can tell, there's a lot of different targeting options, a lot of different audiences, different types of ads. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I do teach uh, a Google ads course for the Digital Workshop Center. I've got the link right here. I will be sure to chat that here in a second in the chat. 
But if you want to just take a screenshot right now, if you're watching this online, or if you want to just go ahead and type this in and you're saying, you know, I really enjoyed Benjamin's presentation. I'd like to, you know, obviously reach out to me and see if I can help your business grow uh, sales, leads, website traffic with Google ads, feel free to reach out to me. But also if you want to learn more and maybe can't afford, you know, paying for a, a Google ads service with a company, um, we do have a course that I'm teaching. And so here's the things that are included in it. There's class materials, um, support from a, a vocational a higher education school. They do do free co-working and you get a certificate. And then they actually were able to give me a, a promotional code for today's presentation. So if you guys do want to learn more about Google ads to grow your business, you can go to this link and you can type in BK10 when you check out and you'll actually get 10% off the course. So that's what I have for my presentation. And I have this final last video to play and we'll call it a day. Hello. My name is Benjamin Kepner. I am the Google Ads and Google Analytics instructor for the Digital Workshop Center based in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm also the founder and CEO of Global Social Media Marketing. We are a marketing and education technology training company headquartered in Denver, Colorado. We offer a wide variety of social media marketing, Google Ads and Google Analytics services, as well as building sales funnels to help you expand into new horizons by connecting with so you get the point that's my intro um, we'll stop it there because i want to be respectful of the time so i will stop my share and then um, if there's any final questions i'll let tatiana kind of take it from here all right that was a great presentation thank you um so just a few questions the first one um you were talking about a youtube video earlier on um, when you first started um, someone was just seeing if you had the link so they can finish that video. Um, not sure if you can just put it in the chat. Otherwise, um, we do have a question that came in. Um, it's from an anonymous person, but it says, do you have any advice for those selling products in the digital currency space? Not selling crypto advice. Google has restricted ads in the space, mostly due to crypto scams out there, making it very challenging. Yeah. So the question is, um, how do you sell, how do you not sell crypto? I guess I'm just confused on selling a product. Is that the question? I guess they're trying to sell a product. It looks like they're trying to sell a product within that space, but they're having difficulties because of the restrictions. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So for crypto and things like that, there are policies on Google ads for specific verticals. So like I've worked in housing, um, employment, I guess crypto, what it's falling in is it's it's falling into the credit financial category. So if you ever have any issues with Google ads, the pro tip is to go to Google ads support. There's a feature in Google ads that has a 24 seven customer support and you'll want to reach out to them directly and ask them specifically about what it is in your ad that's getting disapproved and they'll be able to tell you exactly why and how to change it. Awesome. And then I do have one more question that came in from Facebook Live. Um, and the question is, does Google Ads have a better reach than, say, doing an ad on YouTube directly? Yeah, good question. So at the end of the day, Google is the number one search engine. So to give an answer that's easy, yes, Google will always have more search volume than YouTube. I think as a secondary question to that, it's it's thinking about what your audience that you're trying to reach as well too, right? So uh, Google will probably be used more by the general public, whereas YouTube, you do generally find a more younger audience and you generally find actually more males than females on that platform. Awesome, perfect. Thanks, Benjamin, for presenting with us today. And we will just give a, a couple of minutes just for David to get all set up. And then if you have any questions for Ben, he did leave his information prior to the questions being answered. Feel free to reach out to him at any time. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. And then I've left just as a follow up uh, the presentation in the comments. And I've also left the link uh, to sign up for my class in case you want to learn more. Perfect. Thanks so much.